Hello, 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 can you hear me? Hello and welcome to a new video. So today what I'm gonna do is I will switch bit the channel focus into B, switch it back to B a bit more. Because um, really, um, let me put the camera correctly. Okay, so because, well, I do be lang stuff, right? But um, lately, sometimes I also was doing some RL in uh, in whatever language I find on the GitHub repos of reinforcement learning. Um, this was like Unity, and it worked, and the samples worked, and it was kind of cool. But um, I would say that's time that you're investing in other language, like C Sharp, for example, for Unity. And that's cool if you want to learn some things, but but what if you don't want to be changing one language? It's like um, if you change languages um, for, for something that you want to achieve, then you are not advancing very far because you're like changing directions. Right. Yeah. So if you want to advance very, very far, maybe a better idea is to choose the best language and stick to it. But but I, I don't know. I will test this idea. Um, then this for me uh, uh, means to use Belang and learn more about Belang. And then integrate that into some sort of uh, reinforcement learning. Okay, so first learn Belang and then learn reinforcement learning using Belang. Okay, and I can use the other projects like the one uh, of Unity to learn how it works and then do it in Belang or something. Mm. Okay, so great. Today I will uh, probably stay as long as I can until I get tired. So coding session right uh great so this thing is recording this thing is fine now let me open a new terminal and let's begin okay so i will try to only use intellij idea to do this so i will create a new project here and uh i will name it blank um I was maybe learning, but oh no, I should click here. Oh, okay, okay. So we click here in B. And then here we put the project. I will say blank, blank underscore um, cool algorithms. Okay. And then I will just click on create. And as you can see here, we have our Belang project, which is great. So let me also um, open the documentation for this. Something that I like to do with Belang is um, I want to find the documentation from B and copy it to Belang. So I will copy this folder to my Belang project, I mean. Okay, so copy and uh, where is it? Um, and paste here, doc. Okay, so that's it. Now we are only on IntelliJ and we can start coding and building things. So now what things we will build? What, how will we start using Belang? Um, so one would be objects and threads would be something uh, useful, right? Um, hash maps and similar. Um, lists, arrays, and so on, and algorithms 
in general. Okay, so in other words, I want to build modules. Oh, I'm sorry, my face is not being shown here. So I want to build uh, modules in that which I can use uh, in anything later. For example, I don't know if Bilang uh, provides hash maps. Maybe it doesn't. So I will build a hash map and then I can use that in another for another goal that I have in the future. Okay, great. So I will open the documentation as well. Okay. So it says that you, you I think if I enable this plugin then it may um show it in uh, like rendering it like HTML or something. I don't know how, what, how that is called, but um, MD files. Okay. MD. I mean, MD UI. No. Um, well, I don't know, but but there is uh, there is uh, sometimes maybe I disabled it. I don't know. I don't really know about this. Um, uh, 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 uh. Okay. Okay. HTML tools. I don't know, but okay, that's that's fine. Uh, yeah, because if I click enable plugin, it, it I mean it doesn't really work that well. So I want to divide this in a half, like a split right. Okay, and and I can have uh, the documentation on the right. Okay. Yeah, is that okay? Yeah, may, but maybe my neck doesn't like it very much. So, um, something that I would prefer to do is probably move these to the right. Can I do that? Move to right, right top. Okay, that's good. And then I want to um, move this to the left. Um, can I move it? Hmm, or I can just, of course, do this and then um, open main.v. Why? It's not working. <laughs> okay, okay, let me close this. Oh, <laughs> really? Okay, split right. Okay, now here I want to leave it there and here I want to open the docs thing. Okay, this is way better for my neck, I think. <laughs> okay, I feel better in this position. Okay, so um, let's try to do B programming right now. So B is installed. Let's switch, uh, scroll down to where the things begin. Um, when I can also leave it at the index right here, I guess. Oh, here it is what I'm talking about. Uh, so here it will render it as a web page or whatever. So it looks a lot cooler. <laughs> Great. Okay, so if you hover your mouse over here, these things will appear and you click on the last one, then you have this um, beautiful UI. Okay. Um, so I think we start from table of contents. Okay. Okay, great. Okay. So, um, uh, something that I would like to do is create different objects. Okay. 
Okay, so how do I create objects? Hmm. What I want to do is I want to have like a class and then have multiple instances of that thing. Now, in B, I don't think there's classes, but probably I can use a struct for that. I guess. Yeah, because here um, I don't see anything that refers to classes or something. Right. Mm hmm. Okay. Writing documentation, memory management, the search, testing, JSON, concurrency. I will also like to to explore a bit about concurrency as well. Type declarations, type aliases, enums, function types, interfaces, some types, customer types, generics. Hmm. So types, B types, primitive types, type declarations. Oh, maybe that might, maybe that's relevant for me. Okay, functions, references, mm, union structs, structs. So I'm talking about really um, about structs, extracts, and uh, probably type declaration. So let's let's go to type declaration for a second. It says type aliases to define a new type new type as an alias for existing type do new type equals existing type enums color as u8 so that's a color as u8 so instead of calling it u8 i mean yeah i will call it now color because u8 works as a color okay okay it's not bad so that's cool but that's not what i'm looking for enums um function types you can use typology for naming specific function signatures oh this is something that i would like to do okay you can use type aliases for naming specific function signatures. For example, type filter is the same as fn string string. Okay. Or like any other type, for example, a function can accept an argument function, uppercase. Mm, has doc type is a function that need to declare compatibility with a function type. Mm, okay, so here it calls filter. So this is, you know, what I'm gonna use this for. You probably already know. Okay, so let's let's try. Okay, let's see if I can do this. For of course, it will, I will use for print ln. So type. Um, it says filter. Oh, but. This is more of a filter uppercase. Do I need it to be uppercase? Can I just say type OL and then equals to um, FN? But hmm. I don't know how this friendland thing works. Let's see if I can navigate to that print ln the string yeah so it's a string that has a string no this doesn't actually doesn't return any string doesn't return anything right does print ln return anything I don't think so no, it doesn't. So, okay, okay. Must start with an uppercase letter. 
OL. Mm. But what's the, the point? Function types. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe this is not what I'm looking for. Uh, yeah, probably not what I'm looking for, really. Is when you want to define a function and later use it as a type and then pass it as an argument and all that. Probably something that I, not something that I would like to do. So instead I will just define a function ol str, uh, actually s str s string. And then I will say print ln um, s. Okay, so now every time I want to print something to the screen, I can just call ol. Okay, let's run it and see if this actually works. Okay, let me show the terminal just really quick here. Okay, I use that f use that fn thing to enable the fn. <laughs> Uh, keys on my keyboard. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so there we have hello world. Okay, great. So then we go interfaces. Do we need interfaces? What are the interfaces? Mm hmm. Oh, okay. I'll like go. But like TypeScript, these interfaces can define both fields and methods. So, will this be kind of like a class? Mm, I don't know. A type implements an interface by implementing it methods and fields. There is no explicit decoration of intent. Interface foo, interface bar, mute, my struct implements interface foo. Okay. But not interface bar. Hmm. I probably need the help of chat GPT. Right. Yes, I mean, what happens if you got to do lots of things for different objects and you have to create different objects? Um, well, of course, there's also other ways of doing this. Yes, but for example, let's say you have like 200 objects that you want to, you know, perform and you receive a notification to be delivered to those objects and that notification has to start some jobs into those objects. How would you do that? So that's the problem that I am trying to solve. Mm. So really, um, it says interface. So I guess this is an interface to struct, right? I mean, I guess instead of being interface to classes an interface to struct. Mm. An interface can have its own methods. Similar how structs ha can have their methods. This interface method do not have to be implemented by structs, which implement that interface. They are just a convenient way to write i dot some function instead of some function at i. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Similar how struct methods can be looked at as a convenience for writing. S X Y C instead of X Y Z at S. Okay, for example, if a struct cat is wrapped in an interface A, 
that has implemented the method with the same name speak as the method implemented by the struct you do a and you do a that speak the all inter only the interface method is called okay okay so interface adoptable a adoptable speak adopt me okay uh, struct cat fn c cat speak string return meow struct dog and then in the main function it creates a cat with a cat here which is the struct then it says assert dump cat that speak equals meow a adoptable cat assert dump I don't know what assert dump means here I mean it, I guess it means that I don't know what dump is If it's a cat inside the peak, whoever shows it, it's not just any adoptable, but actually a cat, so it will use the cat speak, not the adoptable speak. Well, lots of things to learn, really. <laughs> okay. Adoptable dog. Assert dumb beep. Speak adopt me. Call adoptable speak. Okay, okay, okay. Well, the thing about B is that there is not like great video tutorials to learn from from it so you'll likely have to learn by reading the documentation and by practicing and that's what I'm trying to do <laughs> yes so this is like um how I am reading the documentation Hmm. So it has lots of features, right? I mean, B has lots of features, but I really want to keep it simple. Okay, I want to use the most, um, uh, the most simple features, the most fundamental features, right? So if the problem is what I told you, that you have uh, different objects and then you have to um, for example let's say you have um, you know different people you have to notify them about something and then you can have a map or an array of these people right okay so um, let's create first a list we can create a list right of these people or these objects and then we can create or, or a map or whatever okay so the problem with start is uh, defining this as a struct as far as I know so here is how you def we define structs and so we type struct and I will say something like um, a coin let's say we are we're defining coins or currencies whatever okay doesn't really matter this is an object that's like understandable okay and we will um, inside this we might want to use we can have lots of things right um, so if we do the object oriented approach it we should define like um how to say it, um functions inside this struct 
right? I, I'm trying to search for that. Static types. User new. Hmm. So this is a way of creating a new instance, object, struct. Okay. Not in it struct. Methods. It says B doesn't have classes, but you can define methods on types. A method is a function with a special receiver argument. The receiver appears in its own argument list between the F and keyword. Um and the method name. Okay, so this is the argument that that received. Why? The special receiver argument. Methods must be in the same module as a receiver type. In this example, can register so this. The can register method has a receiver type of type user. This is the receiver type user. Um, named you. The convention is not to use receiver type names like self or this. But a short, preferably one letter, not long name. Hmm, but okay. So it receives a user and then that's how you define it. Right? Well Yes, I think so. Okay, so let's try to um to do this. Let's imagine we are keeping track of a coin price um, over time and we can call it prices because that will be like a list of prices. So prices and I want this to be a list mm. Do we have lists here? So that's the first thing, but let me copy this code for a moment uh, and let me paste it here so I can use it for later. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to search it for lists here. I cannot search it in this view. Really? Um, that's odd, but okay, whatever. I will, I will try to find what kind of lists do we have because I want to use like a price history for these guys. Mm. Okay, so where are the lists? Arrays maps I don't see anything about lists it doesn't have lists as far as I can tell <laughs> right so the B types are like a race and maps I guess I would use an array or implement a list Okay, it says 
An array is a collection of data elements of the same type. An array literal is a list of expressions surrounded by square brackets. An individual element can be accessed during complete during index expression. Indexes start from zero. Okay. Hmm. Okay, how do I define a fixed size array and empty array of floats? Um, so this is how we do it. Okay, so I don't know if I can do it here. So it is here do do I declare this here I don't know if I should declare it here um I, I think I don't right because it's an instruct so an array of floats do we have float or f32 do we have f16 no <laughs> Okay, so F32, an array of F32, is that good enough? Well, I don't know. So here I will try to create that array. So coin, okay, how do I create a struct? Um, oh, okay, okay. So here I will say, um, coin one, and then I did this. Okay, and that's how I create a coin. Hmm. Prices. Hmm. Coin one dot. Cap data. Oh, probably this. I should make this public. I don't know. I don't even know if I'm doing this right. No, I guess I'm not doing it right. Hmm. Oh, probably this is the way. I was forgetting about that. All right. Hmm. No. So, Bob, I don't even know if that's the, that's the way of doing it. I think I n first need to learn more about struct and I will um I will copy these way of initializing an array as well put it here and I will go back to struct okay Hmm. Where are structs? Structs. Okay. Here you initialize this accent. Here I'm trying to initialize this as a float 32. 
but I guess it's not that's not the way how you do it. Can I comment this and try to run it? Because um, I don't know if if I'm allowed to do what I'm trying to do, but I hope, <laughs> I really hope I can. So, uh, oh, it's inside mute. Um, so inside the struct foo, we have a mutable like place. So public is not public, but mute. Is that correct? Well, I guess. I don't I don't really know. Okay. Okay, so that's struct foo. And it says fn foo one. Hmm. Default field values. Here you can see an array, A, array event, but um, it's not using um, this dot right here, well, but this is not mute as well. Oh, now it's okay. Okay, so this is, I guess, what I'm looking for. Hmm. Okay, and we can also have a name, right? Name string. Okay. So um, prices, we can initialize this as we are creating a new array. Is that correct or, or not? Or should I um, define it as a, as a fixed size array like 10,000, for example? Okay. And then maybe I can fill that. Can I fill that? Um, coin one dot Okay, so can I say like four for loop? Um, so let's search for for loops, right? Because I mean, I really forgot how to do things in B. Is because I haven't um, exercised it, like practice it. Okay. Well, I think this is not a very good way of searching, right? Maybe I can switch back here and and look for loops for loop for eyes less than 100 okay hmm bear four The condition can be immediately result in an infinite loop. So this is a C kind of four. Okay, so I like this. I like this. So for I is zero. Um I right. I um less than coin that prices coin one. Can I just name it C instead?
see that why I cannot access the prices. Maybe because I cannot shouldn't initialize this. Now I'm a bit lost, because previously I was able to. Okay, why it's not working? So I guess this thing is not working. But I will try it regardless. Okay. Um max prices. Ten thousand. Again, I will go back to structs. Well, you may think I'm a bit slow, but well, sorry, sometimes I'm a bit slow. What can I do? <laughs> right. Mm. Why can I just um? X int Y int I guess I cannot do this inside the struct, right? Pause. So pause. <laughs> Oh, it's just equals. Okay, so just equals. You can mark a struct field with required attribute to tell B that that field must be initialized when creating an instance of that struct. Okay. I would like to have that name initialized when creating an instance. So to test this feature, I'll say a um this is how you do it, right? Um required. Okay. Um is this correct? I don't know, but I think also the linter may not be correct, because I'm not I'm not really sure that the linter is correct. So I'll try to I'll try to run this. And it says expecting type declaration. Um, the type would be. Oh, sorry, I didn't define the type. Um, int. Then in line twenty six, and it says something about prices that length. I would say I plus plus. I don't know if that would work or not. Hmm. And it says field name must be initialized. Okay. So I will just call it USD. Is that correct? Is that a good way of initializing it? 
too few fields in coin literal expecting three got one what do you mean but I don't want to pass all the, all the things that it has right hmm So is there another way of initializing this? So maybe name, I have to put name here. Oh, okay, at least it compiled. Okay. I mean, the linter is not, not great because here I am using coin here and it's not, not working. Um, I will print this things so I will call ol and I will print I will just print i for now I got nothing because c price's length is zero. Now what if I put here max prices max prices why it doesn't allow me to do that hmm okay 10k let's run it ah okay now oh, it works but but it doesn't allow me to reference something here. Hmm. Because I think the struct is only for defining things. Is that correct? Hmm. Well, I don't really know. Because there is no place in which we're finding the samples of using a variable inside a struct. Foo mute poof poof mute. Hmm. Public but mutable only in parent module. public immutable, private immutable. Buck, title string, name, Samantha. Hmm. Information is factory function. Meetouts. Hmm. B supports embedded structs. Okay, so I guess 
I just have to to delete this one here. Right. Now I want to 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 put in the in the container. I want to put the double of i. So that means see that prices at i would be set to i times 2. And then I will print, I mean, i here. And I will also print value, which is c, um, see that price at i. Okay. And I'm sorry, it's prices. Prices. It says field price of struct is immutable. So I need to allow for prices to be immutable. Can I just say mute like that? Will that work? Maybe not, maybe we have to do it this way. Then says C at prices at I. Says that C is immutable. But okay, wait a minute here. Declare it with mute to make it immutable. Okay. Well, I guess. Because uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm trying to access a an array that is in C, so I guess I have to make C mutable as well. Okay. Okay. Now we are there. Okay. I mean slow, but advancing a bit okay so now we have a list that has values and we also have um an object or a struct mm. and that's what i wanted to do so that's great um now what else can we do from here? Okay. Let's see what else can we do from here. We have a mute C right here. Which isn't coin. Then we are filling the prices with some value. which is great. And then I would like to have a list of coins now, if that's possible. So an array of coins. So, I don't know how I would do that, but I'll try. So I will call it coins. And I want to initialize that as um, array. of coins, let's say 10 
coin <laughs> is that okay I don't know oh and then this um, coin this C coin here this C will be coins at zero for example okay okay um did it build did it run correctly um it says warning use one type instead of x1 type okay so I need uh, these curly races, sorry. Um, okay. Let's just compile now. That's done, it's compiled. Now I'm trying to run it, but <laughs> um, not working. Okay, okay. Okay, you know what? I will reduce the size of this prices to ten so I can visualize better what's going on. Okay. Okay. So it's not that hard. That that was easier than I expected actually. Okay. And then I can do the same for all coins, right? For I, actually for, let's say for X, um, zero, um, X less than coins that length, right? Um, X plus plus, Okay, and inside this, we will put these coins at X. Okay, and we will put this thing inside here. Okay, so I think I'm getting more familiar with language now. Oh, it's not there. Undefined identity. Oh yeah, because I don't need this. This is, use this is not, not useful. Okay. Okay, so. I can also print the coin coin number and I'll print X is the coin number right um X I, I don't need these um these two curly braces here right okay so coin number zero Coin number one, coin number two, and then I can uh, I multiply this by coin number, right? <laughs> Which is cool. Okay, so when you get familiar with the language, it's actually really cool. It's a really cool language. Um, of course, it's not my first time, but I'm remembering how cool it is. Um, so it works, apparently. Um, yes. Um. So, coin zero, every value is zero. Coin one, every value is the same. Coin two, every value is the double. Coin three, every value is the triple and so on which is kind of neat okay um now let's try to benchmark this can i do that okay i'll say now to now and of course it will say well we don't have too many expression levels, what do you mean? 
too many expert levels. Okay, so um, I'll create a function called now. So, <laughs> why? Fn now. Um, it, I wanted to receive a. No, it doesn't receive any pattern, any parameter, but it will return a long. I don't know. And it will, let's say it returns zero for now. Will it compile? I just want to know if it will compile. Unknown type long. Mm. A U64 then. Hmm. Now MS. Now MS. Okay, current time in milliseconds. Okay. Now I have to find a way of getting the time in milliseconds. Mm, okay. Time. Time, new stopwatch. <laughs> okay, I have to import time. Import time. Let's see if I can know what ha time has to offer. Time that. Oh, okay, don't have anything. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Hmm. Okay. It says new stopwatch. Okay. From river files uh, will produce a profile file which you can analyze. Okay. Ooh, okay. The generated profile.txt file will have lines with four columns. You can also use stopwatches to measure just portions of your code explicitly. Um, yeah. I will do this stopwatch thing. But... I would like to have like current time in milis or something. Time that be.
time Unix time Unix time melee okay the problem is that it's not showing me by the linter but maybe I have to do uppercase time or not mm -hmm. how do I access this thing like Unix time melee, how can I access this? Mm. Unknown enough mm, time. Mm. Oh, the linter is not working very well. Unix time melee. Time that Unix. Is I sixty four? Okay. What you mean? time Unix of time It doesn't help that much. I guess I have to open Firefox. Why oh, don't have Firefox really? Okay. Okay. Um, Blang. That IO. And then documentation. No, that's not. 
tutorials. It's not standardly tax time. Okay. Time now, really? <laughs> okay. Bring the land time now. Hmm. Okay, let's follow this. <laughs> Cannot find says No. What the hell? Where is now? <laughs> okay. When is now? <laughs> um, so, um, I just want to get the time in milliseconds. Now returns the current local time. <laughs> I sur I mean I'm surprised that I'm going very slow but Okay, I guess. Maybe I have to learn to to be slow. In Unix time. With second resolution. Unix time. Unix time milli. <laughs> well, I guess I will um Oh wait 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 a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh okay, so maybe here is what I have to do. Okay. 
Okay. Now we're talking. <laughs> mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I will call this T zero. And here I'll call this T one. T1 minus T0 MS. What the fuck? Time taken zero milliseconds. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Zero milliseconds. Really? Zero milliseconds. Really? Is that fast? Is that fast? Maybe because we are not having lots of things here, but let's increase the stakes a bit here. Um, 100. I don't know if the time is measuring correctly. Time taken six milliseconds. Oh yeah, I think it is. <laughs> okay, so it's working. Okay, so this is how you get the time. Which is great. So six milliseconds. Okay, so what's what would be one millisecond? Like I don't know, twenty. <laughs> twenty would be one millisecond, right? Um, why? What do I not hear? I don't know what the, there is. So one millisecond. And now um, let's um, uh, do one hundred without printing to see how long it takes. 100 without printing. Zero, okay. Now 1,000. Zero. 10,000. Two. Okay. Hmm. I don't really want to have that many coins. I would rather have 100 coins and actually here in prices I would like to have like 1000 prices 1 millisecond okay what about 10000 prices would that be 10 milliseconds i don't think so maybe it's 8 or something no, 10 10 it's 10 okay cuz i knew i thought that creating the coin will take some more i don't, I don't know okay No, because I'm not creating new coins. <laughs> okay, so... Um, mm -mm -mm. 10,000 prices. 10 milliseconds. This is fast. I mean, <laughs> this is fast. I mean, I guess it's fast. Right? Quite fast, in my opinion, actually. Yeah, because it's creating 100 coins of one, 10,000 each one. That means 1 million, 1 million like spaces in 10 milliseconds. Not, not bad, I guess. It's not bad. Hmm, so great. And also it compiles really fast. But now this error is returning, returning, and returning. Identified ident time. What do you mean ident? Un unidentified. Haven't I imported? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Import time. I thought I had. Let's 
so I will not optimize import. Okay. Time taken 10 milliseconds. Oh, great. So that's how I experiment with B, only with IntelliJ. Well, a bit of help from the internet but almost no help really <laughs> but okay so that's how I code <laughs> um not very efficiently right no not very efficiently but still kind of cool That's some code for you. Well, yeah. Even though the the linter is not it's not working like in my favor. <laughs> it's not working very well. Even though that's true. I think it's still good. The problem really is that, um, that the B plugging is not updated for IntelliJ. So we have VS Code, VS Code, BIM, Emacs, and Sublime. Yeah. So, yes. Look at this, B compiles itself in less than one second. And the next contender is Go, which is like 100 times more. <laughs> okay. In time and 200 times more in space. Okay. Um, okay, so normally I tend to code faster and move faster, you know, but I think sometimes it's also good to move slow. For me at least, I think I'm learning to move slow. Yes. Code code reloading a powerful graphics library. I mean, um, as long as B does the basic things well, like math, memory, loops, maybe I will, instead of, um, instead of developing all these things in B, I would, th I think it would be it would be better to spend time developing data structures such as arrays, DQs, lists, um, hash maps. I think that would be <laughs> better, but, but okay. Yeah, because really if you ha when you have these arrays and the, like the collections library that, that that Java has like you know lists arrays and all that maps that makes code a lot easier to write because I mean you always need lists right but, but maybe lists maybe are sometimes a bit um, slow so that's why these arrays are quite fast. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. Well, I think it's time to end the video. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed it.
me watching me code slowly um so that's it for this video leave a like subscribe leave a comment share and all that <laughs> and i see you on the next one bye